y'all. Welcome to the Suburban Stitcher podcast. Today is May 25th, 2018, and it's a lovely day here in suburban Texas. I am coming to you from Richmond, Texas, which is way outside of Houston. <laughs> um, it's, it is summer. It is, it's so summer. We are getting um, this We've had a lot of rain this week, which has kept our temperatures right below 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, I don't know, I think that's like 27, 28 Celsius, I think. I'm not totally sure. Um, but we are headed this coming week into hot, hot weather with lots of 90 degree, almost 100 degree Fahrenheit, which to be honest is really, really early for this time of year. So usually we're in the 90s, but not getting this close to 100 degrees. It's a little scary that one day this week we're projected to be at 98 degrees. <sighs> and it's it will still be May. <laughs> so anyway, um, it is the Friday before Memorial Day here in the United States. So we're headed into a nice three day weekend. Um, my family, of course, has baseball tournaments, one for each child, of course, on different sides of the city, about an hour and 15 minutes apart from each other. So we will be doing a lot of split parenting, <laughs> one with one and one with the other, and looking at our phones, cheering on the other one virtually while we watch the um, child that we're with. And um, yeah, that's kind of life, right? When you have lots of kids that are active and they love what they do. Um, we accommodate and we, you know, as best we can, and we get there, get them in what they want to be in. So anyway, I hope that y'all are doing well and having lovely days um, and that you have, if you're in the United States, that you have lovely um, Memorial Day plans coming up. I am not exactly sure when this will go live. I have some different little segments and videos, and um, this is probably going to be a piecemeal <laughs> video. Um, it's been... So I haven't finished any projects in a little bit of time, which is just fine. It's the nature of my schedule and my life and my kind of knitting mojo. I was really good for good in quotes. I mean, I'm my own definition of what is good for me with knitting, right? Um, let's rephrase that. I was knitting fairly monogamously and not starting a bunch of new things and really focusing on finishing up some older projects at the beginning of the year. And I was able to do that. I've started quite a few new things this year, but I've also finished, a, you know, some big projects. But now I'm getting kind of back to the point where I have a lot of works in progress. I want to start a million new things. And so I'm really focusing on not starting like a new things. <laughs> um, so I would like to talk to you though about a few of the projects that I've been working on. One is a fairly new work in progress. Um, of course I'm sitting here in the middle of the row because why would I not be? And it's like the middle of a week of, anyway, you'll see. Okay, so I am, let's get this tag. I am test knitting the new, um, I believe it's called Indigo Leaves pattern by Hohi Locatelli. And this is a new sock pattern that's out of a, I would say a heavy sport um, light DK weight. So you could use a sport or a DK weight um, yarn for um, this pattern. And there are lots of sport and DK indie dyed yarns out there. Um, including I will have a shop update soon with some DK weight merino nylon um, sock yarn in it that if you want to knit these socks, you can. But let's talk about the yarn that I'm using in the pattern. So first of all, the yarn that I'm using and the yarn that she used for the design is Madeline Tosh. The color is Field Notes and the base of this sock is called Work Sock. It's listed as a heavy fingering to sport weight 400 yards, 365 meters. Um, I feel like 
this is easily a sport to DK for me, but I also feel like Madeline Tosh underweights a lot of their yarns. I have always felt like the Madeline Tosh DK was more like a worsted, that Tosh Vintage was more like an Aaron than a worsted. Um, that's just me. Um, so take it what it's worth. But it is a very, very plump sport. And the pattern is knitting up so quickly. I think I've worked on this like a day and a half. And I'm like, for me with pattern socks, that's pretty amazing. So here is the design so far. Um, I am, the great thing about this, I'm knitting this on size two needles, which is even a little bit smaller than what she recommends. But I really like the gauge that I'm getting. It's a, quite a snug fit, which I know once it's blocked, and um, blocked and, you know, spread out and stitches evened up and stretched out a little bit. It's going to be so perfect on my foot. It fits, but like snug. And so when it's washed and blocked, it's going to be perfect. Um, I might, no, I'm not going to go up to a different size needle. Anyway, so it's got this beautiful leaf motif with these cables running down the sides and then the back is all stockinette. Um, I am knitting it exactly to pattern because I'm testing it. So I'm knitting with a heel flapping gusset, which is very unusual for me. Um, but I like it. So I'm excited to see how this fits in comparison to some of my other socks. Um, it never ceases to amaze me how cool heel turns are. I just love it. A little heel cup right there is so cute. Um, I love this yarn. It's super plump. I love the colorway. It's got, it's mostly this light um, platinum gray with very sparsely speckled, mostly gold kind of ochre speckles, but there's some pink and some blue. I'm looking to see which I'm imagining is probably just the dye breaking and whatever they used, but it's blue and there's like some pink, pink ones as well. Pink is the most rare color, I would say. Mostly that ochre, which is gorgeous. All right, well, I have managed to drop all these stitches, which is easy to fix, but anyway. So that's the sock. I plan to, maybe this afternoon, get the rest of it picked up so that the, this can become travel knitting again and get kind of get through the gusset decreases. And then tonight, tomorrow and Sunday, when I am at a million baseball games, <laughs> hopefully I should get plenty of knitting time on this. So again, that's Indigo Leaves by Hohi Locatelli. It's a sport slash DK weight um, sock pattern. And um, the yarn that I'm using is Madeline Tosh Work Sock in the Field Notes colorway. This is available only on their website and the ordering process was lovely. Um, sorry, I just dropped my cable needle. I do have to use a cable needle for that one to get nice little cables. Okay, um, so the next project that I want to show you didn't get a whole lot of attention, which is really sad because last episode I said, oh my gosh, I have figured out that if I do five rows a day or three rows a day or whatever it was, well, best laid plans. Once I said that, <laughs> then of course it's the last thing I pick up. That's just how my brain works, but the intentions are still there to be good and responsible. <laughs> Um, but my Sunset Highway sweater, it's, again, I really don't even know why I'm showing it because it does not have a lot of progress since the last time. But here it is. I have it on two needles because I tried it on and I let a friend try it on. Um, but I am, I don't know, maybe four or five inches past the underarms. And I have to knit 15 inches past the underarms before I start doing short rows. So... 
So there's that. And that, again, hasn't gotten a whole bunch of attention. What did get some attention is I cast on my Carbeth card again. I don't think I had cast this on last time. Um, and so here's where I stand with it. I have, I'm knitting the cardigan one. There's a cardigan and a pullover. I have knit the body, which just seems super short, but it's cropped. And I have been told everything that I read says, pay attention to Kate. She knows what she's talking about. And even though it seems like there is no way that this will be the right amount, that this is the right amount. So I am just trusting Kate. <laughs> and I guess worst case scenario, if I decide, oh my gosh, this is tragically too short, I could always go back in and pick up stitches here and knit down and re-knit the ribbing. I mean, I know how to do this. I'm a knitter. I can do this. So I have knit the body. That is attached to two balls of yarn because, of course, I am knitting this held double. I'll show you the yarn. I'll talk about the yarn in a second. But then I have also knit the first sleeve. So that is exciting. So I've knit one sleeve and I have knit the body. I am holding yarn held double and absolutely loving it. My I have used stitch markers here on this arm to keep track of where I did the increases so that it was easier for me to count. And I did a stitch marker here because it made me happy. <laughs> this is more truly a progress keeper. Uh, but this is a cute little um, simply serving little toast and bacon and eggs. And okay, so let's talk about this yarn that I'm using. I am using Crimson Company Phoebe, which is a DK. I did a little poll on Instagram and asked if it was superwash or non-superwash. The overwhelming majority of people said it was superwash, but I am here to report that it is in fact a non-superwash wool. Um, it does not say that it's superwash anywhere, which I believe that's the thing, right? Um, that you have to say it. And it also, um, the care indicates that it is not a superwash. Um, this colorway, that actually is, man, it looks, is it bad to say that it looks prettier on the screen than it is in real life? Um, it's a very brick red color. The colorway is called Mars and it's definitely way back when, when I talked about getting this yarn, I think I mentioned that I thought it had a little more rose in it, but it is definitely a brick red. So let's see where I can get that to. This is just trying to focus over here. There we go. It's just, that's really it. It's a brownish brick red. So, um, but yeah, I have, I went to a retreat last weekend and knit a little bit on the sleeve, got the sleeve finished and I need to cast on for the second sleeve. So I have done the body. I've done one sleeve. I need, need to knit the second sleeve and then I'll join it all up. And then I think from there, it's going to go really quickly because most of the knitting is done by that point. Then I'm just doing like the yoke and knitting gets smaller which is always nice. <laughs> um, and that is in this cute polka dot bag that I bought at one of my LYSs. And it is made by 65 South. And it's 65southalabama.com is the website. But it's got leather handles. It's this beautiful kind of dusty, mauvey, polka dotty wonderfulness. Um, 
Okay, so that is a work in progress. Let's see, what else did I work on? I worked a little bit on my everything shawl. I am into the brioche, but my knitting time lately has been on the go knitting. So I have not, um, I the lace weight mohair has not been like sitting at baseball weather knitting. <laughs> I'm sure you can't imagine why I wouldn't want to do that, right? So yeah, so it's going. As we know, brioche is slow-ish, even though I love it so much. I did, I actually did quite a bit of it at the retreat. This is something I worked on after I finished that sleeve. I pulled this shawl out and worked on this, um, which was great. So let's see, I've worked on that in the last two weeks. What else can I show you? I worked on a really old whip because I was like needing something that I didn't really have to think about. And none of my projects were at a, I don't have to think about this point. So um, this shawl, I've talked about this for three years, I think, literally. Um, it is by Lisa Much. It's going to be amazing when it's all done. It's just, it's just not the thing I pick up. It's the Clean Quant, C-L-I-N-Q-U-A-N-T, Clean Quant by Lisa Much. It is a huge, huge, huge three skein DK weight shawl. Sorry, I keep clanging the tripod with, so that's the shape of the shawl. So I am almost done with that big gray circular semicircle crescent shaped center. And then I get to sh start those fun wedges, which I'm really excited about. So here is, I think this is the correct side. Um, yes. So I know. Does it matter? No, it doesn't. This is the correct side. So it's all garter stitch. Oh my gosh, I'm loving that this is going to be such a lovely neutral shawl. Um, so this is all garter and then we've got these neat little slip stitches here. There's going to be one right here and then there's going to be three that stack on top of each other and then right after that I get to start those little wedges to make it look like a lopsided sun. <laughs> like a half of a sun literally because of the little points. So the yarn that I'm using for this one is Core, it is a fiber story, Core DK, in the vague colorway. And I got this from the Loopy U at least two or three years ago. I think I did it, started it for, um, what is the thing they do? Every Camp Loopy every summer. Um, Camp Loopy, maybe, um, I want to say either 2015 or 2016. I think 2015, I'm almost positive. Um, so this has been on the needles for quite a while. It's in one of my favorite project bags. I absolutely love it. Um, it's a three skein project. I've already finished one skein and this is the second skein. Um, the other thing that I'm really jazzed about is we all know that hand dyed yarn is super finicky about dye lots and look at that. I don't, honestly, I don't even know. I can't really tell where I added the second skein. And it's been so long since I did, I don't remember. So, I don't even have an end here. I must have woven it in or did a magic knot or something. Because I don't even see, I don't even see evidence of it. So, that's rad. Very cool. So I have three rows until I get to start doing wedges. And then I feel like it's going to go a lot quicker. Those slip stitch rows are not speedy. They're super slow. So I worked on that just in the last couple of days. That's kind of been my sitting in bed, cheering for the Houston Rockets. 
screaming at the Houston Rockets <laughs> um, knitting project. And let's see, what else? I have been knitting on my sock, but it's purse knitting. I actually finished the first sock of my um, sock blank socks, my spun right round sock blank socks, but I didn't bring it. So you'll just have to trust me that I finished one and I'm on the second one. I cast it on pretty much right away because I knew I had to um, or it wouldn't get done. So that's perfect baseball purse knitting for me. So that will that will speed along. But I really, like I mentioned earlier, I really want to get this one to the point where I can get moving on the foot because I want to have this first one done so that I am a good test knitter <laughs> for once. It's a sock. I should be a good test knitter, right? Um, okay, so I want to talk a little bit about Hello Lovelies because I have some beautiful things to show. First, just because I'm wearing it. This is my new Shelly Can shirt with the octopus yarn holding guy, and I love it. Um, the funny thing is, is that, like I've mentioned before, I'm not a super slim. I mean, I'm pretty average, right? I, I think I'm kind of an average American uh, United States sized woman. Um, and I wear large or extra large shirts depending on the brand and the size and ease and all of that stuff. I ordered this unisex large, which usually fits a little bit slimmer on me. And it's it's pretty roomy, which is kind of nice, but I was sort of hoping it would be a little more fitted. Um, so if you're looking at these shirts, just know that. I normally wear a large and it fits a little bit tighter. But then again, if it had been a, a lot tighter, I would have been really upset because the sleeves would have felt too tight and I would have been pulling on them. So if you're looking at these, the shirt, because you want one, um, the fabric itself is really soft. So that's nice. So there's my review. <laughs> um, okay. Next up in Hello Lovelies, because there's quite a few, I do want to show this. It, I've moved a project in it because the bag is so beautiful. I've been, had it sitting out, and I'm hoping that looking at this pretty bag will motivate me to pull this project back out. It's my Rugged Coat by Hohe that was in Interpretations 5. Um, but this is this gorgeous sweater bag. It's by Birdleg Bags who I have never purchased a bag from, and she's been making bags for so long, longer than Suburban Stitcher was making bags even. But it is the most beautiful, well-made, I was looking to see if she had her tag on it anywhere. And I honestly don't see one. But it's nice canvas. And guys, this is a huge cardigan with I mean, it's at least like two to three skeins of DK already knit in it. And I'm holding two full skeins that are caked up and three half partial skeins. And there is still so much room. I mean, this bag is enormous. It's got a handle, which honestly, I can't, I can't see me using a ton just because the bag is so big. Like, I don't see myself carrying it like this because it's so heavy but I could um but it's oh my gosh it's so beautiful I love the bees and the flowers and the colors are definitely Diane as I stand in this room that's this exact color with pink accents <laughs> um some of you may also notice that the room is a little bit different this will be moving out hopefully this weekend um this dresser, it's going to be repurposed elsewhere in our house. I have new yarn storage here. There's going to be more yarn storage eventually up there. Just with the new studio, it's made everything else in the house shift. And I'm getting organized and cleaned up and junk going away. And I couldn't be happier. So that's really exciting. So anyway, bird leg bags, beautiful sweater bag, gorgeously made love the fabric, love the details. I love everything about it. Um, I 
went to our retreat and one fun little goodie fun little goodie bag that they had but then I also won a little door prize that is two skeins of Koi Goo lace weight which is pretty fun I feel like I want to hold them double and knit something so I loved the colors in them. There's this cowl pattern that came with it, but I know I won't knit the cowl. So I'm thinking about just finding something, something I can hold double and knit this with, because it's really beautiful. This one especially is totally my jam. So I won those um, while we were on this retreat, we went to two different yarn stores. And, um, oh, I will say, it was the Wool Slayer retreat, which are my friends that live here in Texas. And they made these row counters for us that are personalized with our name. So that's really fun. They're wooden, super fun souvenir with their logo. Um, we went to a new to me yarn store. It's also very new in existence. It is called the Modern Stain. Oh my gosh, this is not enamel. This is like a mug mug. Wow. Okay. I didn't, I haven't opened this bag since I got back. <laughs> so bad. But the Modern Skein is the yarn store that we were at. And it is the cutest. And the owner is amazing. And it is all hand dyed yarn which is super awesome. It's not necessarily all indie yarn, but it is all hand dyed. Um, I, because I'd never seen it in person and just lost my mind. Also, I cannot turn down a good birds of a feather kit. <laughs> so I got all chain yarn because it's amazing. Um, or chain fiber, I guess is her business. But I... Got this skein, which is so bright and fun, and I thought would work amazingly well with my hedgehog um, neons that I got earlier this year. I got this skein of mohair because it was iridescently beautiful, and I couldn't pass it up. This one is called denim, which is funny because it's a gray, but it's not denim-y. I mean, unless it's like the most faded gray jeans ever, but... I don't care what it's called. It's beautiful. And then this. These are all the same colorway. This is two skeins of Oyster on the Merino Singles and one skein of Oyster on Kid Silk Mohair. And now there's mohair flying everywhere. I love it. I just love mohair. I want to knit all of the mohair. I love it so much. So I got those and because I spent so much money in our store, I got this mug for free. Um, she is in Montgomery, Texas, which if you're looking at Houston, it is like North, Northeast, no, North, Northwest by like an hour and ish of downtown. So, I mean, it's not, if you're, if you're familiar at all with the Houston area, there's Conroe that's about an hour north of Texas, and it's like maybe 20 minutes west of Conroe. And then we also visited another store in Navasota, Texas that I had been to, but it's been many years. I had a trunk show back, gosh, three years ago, maybe. And it is called WC Mercantile. And I bought the new issue of Making Magazine, which is absolutely stunning. Um, I didn't even know that my girl Hohe has a pattern in here, which that was a lovely surprise. Um, it's called, let me find the picture. It's called Mint Leaves. And I love this because it looks like it would accommodate roomier hips, which I really love because that's what I own is roomier hips. I also bought, y'all know I love me some Olivia, this handmade life. Um, she and I did a collaboration together last year and she makes, she, her aesthetic 
this is why we all love her, right? Her aesthetic, her color sense, her photography, everything is so beautiful. And she has started selling her handmade bags again. And I loved this one so much. It's a gray and white kind of linen-y. Yeah, it's linen. Um, but then this is like this lavender gray linen bottom. And I just thought, well, if that's not Diane, I don't know what is. But it's also so Olivia, which is why I love it. I love the metal zipper. The lining is a gray lining. And then her little stamp, which is beautiful. So I got that. And y'all, I've been spoiled in the last two weeks. Totally spoiled. Um, I have done a giveaway for this next maker before, and she and I decided to do a swap just among the two of us. And sometimes I do swaps with people and I don't always talk about them, but, um, and I don't say yes to all the swaps that I'm asked to do because sometimes I just can't, or, you know, for whatever reason, I've already done enough, like, um, sending out things or, you know, giveaways. And I just am unable to do that at the time. But this um, lovely lady has, we've just gotten to chat over um, social media and she's so sweet and so talented. And I am eternally grateful that she wants to swap with me for my stuff because her handwork is amazing. And her presentation of how she gets her, um, how you, her packaging, like, everything is it is literally like opening the most beautiful gift you've ever received and that is bed of roses on etsy um she made this bag which is a hand dyed wool on the bottom with this gorgeous mauve and gold polka dot um kind of is it a i guess it's a cotton might be a linen i'm not really sure either way i don't care it's beautiful it's got a rose gold detail here with the little druzy charm, which is ugh, like the cutest leather, pink leather um, strap. She got me this gorgeous tea, which um, I'm going to have to wake up early and make some. I'm actually, I might make some iced tea. Maybe I'll do that. I want to show you this tea. It is so beautiful and it smells amazing. It's local to her. It's a Norwegian company. I'm not going to be able to pronounce anything. Premium, premium lo losvekt. <laughs> it's so, I'm so not good with any foreign words. Um, I feel like that might be organic though. Does that mean organic in Norwegian? <laughs> Jasmine Rose. I can figure that out. But look at this tea, you guys. It's like Jasmine Rose, but minty, too. Look how beautiful. <gasps> the most beautiful tea ever. Most beautiful tea I've ever seen, anyway. So I'm really excited to try that. Um, okay, so that's the bag and the tea. She sent me three skeins of phenol yarn by phenol um i guess it's two ply phenol two ply by rauma in gorgeous gorgeous colors so beautiful in a cream a purpley mauve and a like a dark bunny brown like heathered bunny brown it's so pretty and then she sent me the pattern for the underwing mitts which i'm so excited to make um, and then there's more, I mean, guys, and she sells all the stuff. I mean, outside of the yarn and the tea, she sells all this stuff that she makes in her shop and it's so beautiful. So I got this necklace on a leather chain again, which I will, I mean, this is like the kind of stuff you buy as a non knitter, like in a store. I would not think twice about wearing this kind of thing even if I wasn't a knitter, <laughs> I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It's not so like, oh my gosh, that's knitting jewelry. It's just beautiful. It's all rose gold, kind of a coppery rose gold metal. And it is stitch markers on this big locking ring. 
right there. And then this one has all of these charms, even this cute personalized with a D for Diane and crystals that are all pink and white and feathers and just the most beautiful, just the most beautiful thing. So thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine. I absolutely love it. I cannot wait to accessorize my outfits all summer with this. Um, and so I want to show you her card. My name is Catherine. And which this is the cutest. It says maker, dreamer, and wildflower. And then bed of roses is her business on Etsy. And on Instagram, let me get that closer so you can see. Take the glare out, there we go. And I will put links to her in the show notes. Um, so let's, speaking of show notes and all things Suburban Stitcher and shop news, the potentially most exciting news of the last at least several years is that Suburban Stitcher has its own website. I'm so excited. SuburbanStitcher.com is no longer a WordPress blog. It is a own.com shop. I am off of Etsy. You can only buy my products now on my own website. I'm so thrilled. I am so excited for all of the um, just functionality and new things that I'm going to be able to bring you and better service and just better everything. I'm so, so, so excited. So thank y'all for getting me there, for allow allowing this to happen. Um, this is an exciting year with a build out of a studio and new websites and new products and just so much new stuff. So I'm so, just so honored and thrilled that y'all have been with me on this journey. Um, I also have a couple of new yarn colors to show you. So let me get those. So this new color is so summery and so happy. I absolutely love it. It's called Pink Grapefruit. And it looks exactly like Pink Grapefruit to me. It's this pretty pinky reds and yellows and oranges, very citrusy, pinky fun. So this is pink grapefruit on sock. And I have some on single sock as well for fun summery shawls or accents and other things. Um, I also, these are on the website right now, suburbanstitcher.com. I have a new color that's coming soon. Um, excuse me, and I was going to call it asphalt, but I think I'm going to call it ash, and I'll talk about why. So I think that um, the credit for this is going to go to Emily Straw, uh, Butterfly M3, Butterfly M5, Butterfly Emily Straw, Knitting Butterflies, and she is the um, Tightly Spun podcast. Emily, why could I not think of that? My brain just totally went blank. Okay, so this new colorway, um, another friend of mine asked me if I had a color that was in between coal and cinder, like a dark gray that wasn't black. So here's coal. It's a, you know, not solid black, but it's a black tonal. And here's cinder. It's kind of a medium gray. And she asked if I had a color in between them. And I said, no, I don't. But in my mind, I had already been thinking I really did want a color in between there that was sort of like a gray with black on top of it. Um, so I did that. <laughs> and I have that color in the middle right here is a brand new color and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be called Ash. I was gonna call it Asphalt because it looks like asphalt gray, but then Emily said, you need to call it Ash. And I was like, well, that's perfect because this is coal, which is like a fire burning thing. This is cinder, which is also a fire burning thing, and this is ash. So I think it's gonna be Ash. 
or ashes or something in that family of words. <laughs> so that is a new color that's going to come to the website probably for the shop update this week. Um, the other thing that if you've been on the website, you've already seen little bitty sneak, sneak peeks of it is I have enamel pins coming. I have a brand new logo that I'm so excited about. Yarn labels are still going to look like this for a little while because I have a lot of them and I don't like wasting things. So as yarn gets, um, as these run out, then I will just make some new ones and that will be that. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make new labels yet when I don't need to waste the ones that I have. So it will be kind of a slow rollout rebranding of everything. But my new logo, I have taken the center part of it, but art part of it, and made it into an enamel pin that has silver sparkle glitter enamel. So excited. Um, so go ahead over there. You can take a look at the preview of the pin, be thinking about it. As soon as they get here, they're going right on the website and they will be ready to ship. So very, very excited. There's not a pre-order for them, but I've ordered quite a number of them. So I should have them no problem for, for a little bit of time. But um, yeah, I'm really, really excited about those um, coming in soon. Um, I think that that's it for right now. And I'm just, again, so grateful to everybody for um, allowing me to really stretch my legs and see what this business can do. So, oh, and I'm still accepting custom orders. So all you have to do is email me at diane at suburbanstitcher.com. And I'm Diane with two N's, D-I-A-N-N-E -N -N -E at suburbanstitcher.com. That, um, we can arrange a special order. I do not dye up one of a kind colorways for you. And so I, I want to make that little caveat because I get a lot of requests where someone says, oh, I'm looking for a special skein for a retreat or a special skein for my group of friends or a special, I do not do that. Um, I, when I say custom order, I mean a colorway that already exists but maybe you need three skeins and you only see one skein in the shop or you need a sweater quantity of something. I can absolutely make that happen. If you're like, you have one skein of predictability, but I need four skeins on single sock for a project. Yes, send me a message and we will get that custom order going. But I do not dye custom colors. So I just want to make that clear, <laughs> I guess. Um, all right, I think that that is it. I'm so excited to have a chance to speak with you all again, and I hope that you all have a lovely week or two until I see you again. Bye, guys. Hey, friends. I am here today to talk to you a little bit about a product that I was sent for review, and this is a set of blocking wires. I am hoping that I get this name correct, but it is Lazidas. Lazidas? This is a company that is based out of Israel. This product that they sent me is the Super Flexible Knitting Blocking Wire Deluxe Set. It comes in this carrying bag right here, and it contains 10 blocking wires that are 35 inches long, and, or 90 centimeters, five blocking wires that are 70 inches long, 180 centimeters, and 60 nickel-plated T-pins. Um, they are a very flexible, as you can see, very flexible um, wire. They're very thin. Um, I went ahead and reblocked a shawl. I'm going to put in some pictures here um, because I didn't have anything finished <laughs> recently to show you this. So I went ahead and reblocked a shawl that I already had and um, used one that had lace that I had to pin out and really spend some time with. So I'm going to put in some pictures. You'll be able to see that this is my Love in a Mist shawl by Boo Knits. It's got this Pico border that I had to really spend some time pinning out here. And um, a couple of things that I noted. One, I, first of all, I used two um, both sizes. I used the 70 inch and the 35 inch. I had to um, use both of them in the bottom part to get all of the picos because it's the 
that um, outer circumference of the arc is um, longer than 70. So I needed two different wires. I really probably should have used two 70s, but I used a 35 and a 70. Um, and then of course I used T-pins to block it out. Um, I did not stretch it absolutely to the max. Um, I just kind of got it pinned out um, enough to reblock this thing and after washing it. So the sizes were great. A couple of things that were not my favorite about these wires is the tips, while they are cut at an angle, and I don't know that you're gonna be able to see it. They are cut at an angle. Those ends are not necessarily the smoothest. And I snagged my yarn more than just once. So, um, I really had to be quite careful and purposeful about the holes that I was putting these wires in. Um, but that's my only negative. My positives are they're very flexible. You can get them to the shape that you want. They are conveniently in one kit here, which is really exciting. Uh, it comes with the T-pins, multiple sizes. This is the, the deluxe kit you can buy each length of wire separately. Um, they kind of come in these little round sections here. Um, the other thing that's positive is that um, it really allows you to customize the exact shape that you need to get to. So between the different lengths and the flexibility of these wires, it's really, really nice. Um, and then when it was all dry and ready, and done, it looked fabulous. So my positives are price and the actual product itself. My negative is that that little pointy tip is sometimes just a little bit too snaggy and you have to be careful on some of those really delicate pro um, projects. So that is my review for Lazadas knitting accessories. I will say that these were sent to me for the purpose of reviewing, I did not pay for this item and they did not pay me for my review of any kind other than to send me their product. So I would like to thank them for doing so. I would recommend this product with the caveat that you know you need to pay extra care when you are working in those wires. Thanks so much. drinking a little bit of coffee this morning in my soon-ish sloth mug. My husband was given this at work, which I think is hilarious. One, he's so not slothy. He's like the most like go, 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 get everything done at work guy that I've ever met. And two, he doesn't drink coffee or tea or anything hot. And it's super girly. <laughs> So he came home and he was like, here's a mug. And I was like, yes, I love it. Love the sloth. Embrace the sloth.